I'm going to read five verses and then we're going to pray. I'm going to. Holy Spirit said to me one, one day in my prayer time, I want you to read the five verses in the book of Ephesians which talk about activity in the spirit realm, in the heavenly places. I want you to read them consecutively without the verses in between. And I did, and I was amazed. It sounds like they are consecutive. It sounds like there are no verses in between. They are so con connected and, you know, just systematically saying one thing and then the next and the next. It's almost like God has got five major points and a few verses in between that he explained that point and then you go to the next point. So I'm going to read those five, these five verses from the book of Ephesians that mention the heavenly places. I'm not going to tell you what they are because I want you to listen, not try to follow me. I'll tell you what they are after I read them so you can write it in your notes. But first, I want you to just listen, and I don't want you trying to compare your translation to mine. Just listen. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, which he brought about in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus in order that the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known through the church to the rulers authority and authorities in the heavenly places for our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against the rulers, powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Isn't that amazing? He starts by saying, I've given you everything you need to operate in the, in the heavenly or in this invisible realm. And then he goes on to say, I did this through Christ when I seated him there. Then the third thing it says is, and I seated you there with him. And then the fourth thing says, so that you could manifest my wisdom to the powers there. And fifthly, then he, he identifies who they are. It's principalities, powers, rulers, the darkness of this world. And for those of you that want the references, it's Ephesians 1, 3, 1, 20, 2, 6, 3, 10, and 6, 12. 1, 3, 1, 20, 2, 6, 3, 10, and 6, 12. We're going to go there right now. Give me my worship team back up here, please. We're going to engage in the air war. We're going to be the Air Force. We're going to operate in the air superiority that he has given us. And we're going to enforce the victory of Jesus over the powers of darkness that have been ruling this nation. We're going to start by praying for our government. I'm 63, year, I'm 63 young years old. <laughs> I've never seen anything that even resembles what is happening in our nation right now. I've seen leaks. I've seen the political turmoil for the last 40 years that I've, when I've, as I've, the, the years that I've been observing. We've come to a point now where our own intelligence service is capturing and leaking conversations between our president and the heads of nations. It's, I've never seen anything like this. Of course, the reason being that what head of another nation now is going to have a, converse, a private conversation with our president? Everything they say to him, they're going to worry, 
is going to be blasted to the world. The goal of all of this is to render him ineffective, unable to govern. Is it, we have a friend, Matt Lockett, who had a dream a couple of weeks before the elections. And in the dream, President Trump had won. And he was in a camper with the president. And the president was telling him how he had won the election. And then he went over to lay down on his bunk. There's a small camper. His camp. His camp. And right over the pit there, a storm came, a, a, a tremendous storm came, and a deluge of rain. And right over the pillow where the president's head would be, and of course head refers to authority and government, there was this massive leak. And it looked like it was just going to almost drown him but in the dream something invisible some invisible force that would be the heavenlies something the eye could not see diverted the, the deluge and the leak could not destroy him Even though when Matt shared that, when he shared that, I knew it was a word from the Lord. <laughs> Never in a thousand years would I have dreamed that the number one thing the enemy would use to try to make, render this man in, ineffective to do what this nation needs right now. And I'm not trying to defend everything the president does or has done. I'm saying I believe he was put there by God because we need the change that he's trying to bring. Yeah. 